commonly when a threat actor gains access to AWS credentials, they'll do a few things depending on their objectives. Like for example, they may try to access Amazon SES or simple email service to try and send spam and phishing campaigns from the organization's email domains. They may try to access EC2 to launch crypto mining instances, or they may try to perform privilege escalation or establish persistence through IAM, which we've been covering a lot on this channel. Commonly also, we see them trying to access Amazon S3 to either find sensitive data like proprietary information all the way to PII or other sensitive customer data, and or to ransom the data, and or to host malware. Now, however, we're seeing something brand new that's having a pretty big impact. Attackers are trying to access services like Bedrock. Now, if you're not already familiar, Amazon Bedrock is their service for interacting with foundational LLMs like Anthropics Cloud, Meta's Llama, and a few others. And attackers are doing this because they can hijack LLM infrastructure to power their AI chatbot services, including role-playing services. And so you can probably guess where this is going. Now, by the way, this report is coming straight from a security research firm called Permiso.io. They set up a honeypot environment and they were able to see exactly what attackers did and how they did it. So check out their original article and the report by Krebs on security for more information and for full details. Okay, so here's what happened and how it happened. First, the AMS account has to get compromised. While there are quite a few ways that this can happen, a lot of times it's because people are still using access keys and they're leaking those access keys or they're falling victim to social engineering attacks. Second, once the account is compromised, the threat actor will perform basic enumeration to figure out what their access looks like through that access key. And a lot of times this will be automated. Through enumeration, if they detect access to bedrock, they typically do a few things. First, they'll check for model availability. Second, they'll request access to models. And then third, they'll invoke the models via prompting. And the most common ways to check for model availability is with the invoke model API call or the get foundation model availability API call. Now, if a model is not available, then the attacker can request access through an application process, which can be done either via the AWS console or programmatically. But once the attacker has access, they then invoke the prompt models. And while Permiso observed multiple models being used, the one most often used has been Anthropic's Claude 3 Sonnet. But why are they doing this? Well, attackers are doing this so they can host AI role-playing services, and they use common jailbreaking techniques to get the models to accept and respond with content that would normally be blocked by the model, because most of the role-playing is explicit in nature, including really messed up forms of explicit material that I'm not going to mention because I don't want YouTube to ban me. I also won't show you some of the messages for the same reason, but you can check out the original research for screenshots. And even some of those are going to be blurred out, which can give you an idea of how messed up it is. Now, users can then chat with these bots on websites that are hosting them to do all sorts of different role-playing. Fortune even wrote an article about this if you'd like to learn more. So instead of having to pay out of pocket to run these explicit role-playing markets, attackers scan the web for leaked access keys to different cloud accounts, and then use services like Bedrock to run their business for essentially free, passing on that bill to the compromised accounts. So if you are compromised in this way, not only are your accounts and resources being used for this, but you could also end up with thousands of dollars in bills. So this is something that we're likely to see a lot more of, even if for other types of use cases, but there are things that we can do to prevent it. First, it starts with preventing compromised credentials. Stop using access keys and other long-term credentials for your AWS environments. There are better alternatives, including using roles and identity federation with multi-factor authentication through Identity Center and or through external identity providers. Number two, keep working towards least privilege, because even if access keys do get leaked, you should make it very difficult for an attacker to be able to access other services or actions. 
But what's really sad is a lot of times we still see admin level permissions associated with access keys. Third, lock down unused services. So if you're not using Bedrock at all and you know you're not going to use it, then you can prevent access to the service using service control policies or SCPs. If you're not familiar with SCPs, we have a free workshop that can show you exactly how to do this, so check that out. And then fourth, implement threat detection. Now there are many different solutions for this, so I'm not gonna list them all, but we can plug in atomic indicators and TTPs, and we can use that for threat detection. And then fifth, you can implement better security against LLM jailbreaking. Though in this case, there's really not much you could do because it's more on Anthropic's end. And so they are working, or they say they're working on improving this. But that's it for now. This is something that you should know about and be on the lookout for, so I just wanted to inform you. But if you want more tips and tricks on how to secure your AWS environments and avoid making the news for the wrong reasons, then subscribe to our channel for more content just like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.